Now, what we decided to do in Cradle, normally in the SysML spec, you define a requirement stereotype, but that's inside the model. We decided because a lot of our users have been using Cradle, so they already have lots of requirements defined in their Cradle database. So we want to reuse that information. So what we did was we made it so that you could use the requirement or test cases from real from Cradle. So you notice down here, if I look at my sidebar, in this one, I don't have many item types defined, but I've got something called the RQMT. That's a generic shall statement. If I come down here to my quick access bar, you'll see I've got RQMT. If I click the drop down and say RQMT for top level, it runs a query on the database and gives me my top level of whatever this thing is. So let me just show you what this thing is. Let's change this to a tree style. Remember how we do that? By going straight up, clicking on this little icon, and now click the plus sign. So this here, if I open it up into a form, you'll see what it is. It is a requirement type. It's a stakeholder, STK for stakeholder need. It's a need statement from one of my stakeholders, some of my users. And it's going to be a functional type thing for my, it's a need statement. If I close that. Now, so that need statement then has two of these other things. Let me open up one of those. You'll see that that is a stakeholder requirement. So I'm building a hierarchy of needs the stakeholder requirements, the system requirements. Now, I'll show you that in a couple different ways using Cradle's table generate traceability tables and also the hierarchy diagram. If I come down to the hierarchy, let's see if I can do this. How do I do this? Let me try it over here. So if I click on that need statement, do the Ryan pop-up menu and say links, hierarchy diagram, I want a, a graphical view now, here it opened up by default a hierarchy diagram, if you will, three levels by default, going vertical from level one to level two, and then it, it, it changes and goes sideways, horizontal here. I'm going to change that. So come over here to the sidebar, and let's see, where is my little window? Up here, see at the top? This arrow arrow is a refresh to redraw the diagram, but this one here is to look at the hid properties. So I want to use a, a template that I built before the session today called HID number one. If I hit apply, let's see if this works. Oh, that's got a lot of stuff there, doesn't it? Okay, let me collapse. Let me collapse that by highlighting the box, the node, and say collapse. And now if I just redo it, so this is my need statement. If I expand one level. So here, this need statement is cross-reference linked in the database. In 7.1, you can also show diagrams. So here's a what's called a requirements diagram in SysML. So there's two requirements diagrams that this object is used on. And then it's linked to these two stakeholders. See the STK underscore REQ? That was my nomenclature for defining a stakeholder requirement. So this is a stakeholder need requirement. Then this is a stakeholder requirement. And then let's expand one of these. Let's, how about the vehicle performance? Let's expand it. So that one, that stakeholder requirement then, is also shown on the requirements diagram, but also it's linked to a use case, operate the vehicle, and it's linked to three derived system requirements. 
So let's take one of these. How about fuel usage calculations? See if it's expanded into anything. So if they expand it again, you see that particular requirement has been allocated to my a block called software controller. This, if I look at the the link here and do a right hand pop up menu and say view edited, you'll see that this is in SysML is called satisfy. So here a block satisfies this requirement. So this block is satisfying that requirement. Okay? Let's try uh let's see, let's try that one. Let's expand it. Okay, so that one, it looks like the powertrain block is satisfying this maximum acceleration system requirement. The system requirement is linked down to a design spec. So we go, we did a switch here. We went here in traceability wise, we went from a need statement to a stakeholder requirement, or you could call that a customer requirement. From the, from the needs stakeholder requirement of the customer requirements down to a system requirement, a derived requirement in my system, then down to a design spec in my architecture. So here there is a uh, an activity called engine ignition circuit controller that the design engineers have specified that's going to satisfy this system requirement. So I'm doing a derived requirement traceability from this level to this level to this level to this level. Then my users want to show how they're going to verify or test this system requirement. So you notice there's a test case. And the test method is a demonstration instead of inspection or analysis. So this test case or verification is also linked to that system requirement. Okay, now that's one way to show it. Another quick handy way is through Cradle's requirements, traceability, and also the SysML requirements diagram. Let's do the requirements diagram first. So let's close everything in the center. This is the uh, eighth, ninth type of diagram in SysML. There are nine diagrams. So if I come back over to my packages, there's probably a package called requirements. There it is. See it? Requirements. Expanded. I've got three diagrams. Let's expand this bottom one. Now, as you, the idea here is to put an actual object for requirement on the diagram. Here, the user wanted to show. Let's look at the category requirement type. This is a need. The need flows down using the derived requirement relationship to a stakeholder requirement and a stakeholder requirement. The stakeholder requirement has been decomposed using the derived requirement relationship down to a system requirement, a derived system requirement. And there's the shell statement and then what type of object this is. Now at this level, because it's a system requirement, we want to start allocating uh, identifying the things that are going to perform that requirement or accomplish that requirement. We call it satisfying SysML. So this block, suspension and breaks, is going to satisfy or accomplish this requirement. Also, you'll notice we got a verify relationship to show that this requirement is going to be verified by this test case, which has got a verification method, in this case, of analysis. Okay. Now, you can imagine you might have a project that's got hundreds of requirements. So no way would you want to draw 100 boxes on one diagram. It just defeats the purpose. So we'll take get into Cradle's traceability tables capability to show with the requirements and their traceability rather than just these simple little diagrams. I would use the diagram just to show some of the key, maybe uh, performance requirements or safety requirements, or some reason I want to emphasize a requirement in its flow down. But in general, I'd come up here. Remember how in Cradle you have this sidebar thing up here called a phase folder? 
to expand it, here I've got something called stakeholder needs. This little traceability, I wanted to go from my need with that number and that name, and you notice how the labels are stair step. So this says that this need has a link, a cross-reference link to a stakeholder requirement. <clears throat> so that need links to two stakeholder requirements. This stakeholder requirement here has a link to system requirements. You know, this is level one, level two, level three. And here it's got three system requirements. Now the engineers want to show that these system requirements, they want to see what was going to satisfy those requirements in the design architecture. So this system requirement here is going to be satisfied. Oops, didn't mean to open that up. Is going to be satisfied by two blocks. See the little two rows here. It's going to be satisfied by the auto mode, auto auto system, the radio, and also by the body. So noise requirement is going to be impacted by the body, a squeaky body of the vehicle, a noisy body and also by the sound system of the vehicle. By scrolling over, the user wanted to put other information. He wanted to show if there were any test cases or verification methods. This one doesn't have any, but look at this one. So the way you read this, remember, in Cradle is look at the heading up here. So see how you got system requirement, and then you drop down one level and do satisfied by and verified by. This means this is linked to the system requirement, and this is linked to the system requirement. Okay? Where if it's dropped down a level, that means this is linked to the system requirement here. So the verification here is associated with the system requirement, not this satisfied by. And then over here, remember I told you this user wanted to show design spec information to go in his design documents for his hardware software architecture design documents. So he linked this object then. So a system requirement over here, this guy here, this one right here, employees, has a derived requirement down here to this design spec which then is going to be satisfied by this particular activity here. And it's going to have this test case to verify or validate that it is doing the right sort of thing. So this is another way to view the traceability information. And of course I could do, I could come up and pick a different view if I wanted to. So here I just want to show a simple view for this object is linked to these different kinds of objects without showing all that detail I did a minute ago. Okay? So the idea here is I want to be able to use Cradle's requirements management traceability capabilities to show the requirements information and then when it's linked into a modeling theme. So if I come back over here, change it back to a tree style, and if I go into noise, so the noise is associated with the auto 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 system, the sound system, and the body. So those two things are supposed to satisfy that particular requirement. And then that requirement is decomposed down into these requirements. Okay, so this is using Cradle's normal requirements management and traceability capability. Okay, now, there's one other thing I put over here. It's a more of a detail. This is more of the designer rather than showing it to your customer. Remember I told you we had different packages for housing the different kinds of information for system L? So let's look at the, for example, the interfacing information. If I run that query, the idea here is I want to see everything associated 
with that particular object. So here I can see that this block named fuel, it's going to be linked to these diagrams, an activity diagram, a block definition diagram, another block definition diagram, and an internal block definition diagram. It's linked to these objects, to these two blocks, oh, excuse me, fuel tank. So remember fuel, it's a, a resource that's flowing through the system. It's going to flow into the fuel tank. Okay, it's linked to the package that owns it. So you see here, uh, excuse me, uh, right, right here, here it is. So fuel block is owned by package number six. I know that because this containment relationship name here, containment, that means that this package owns this block. Where well, look at this one, containment reuse. That means this structure package is using that block called fuel, but it doesn't own it. So it's a reuse capability. Down here, you'll see that fuel tank, it has a flow property, okay, to associate the fuel is flowing into the fuel tank with this flow property here. Let's go down to another couple. So this view is more for the designer who's building the models to help him visualize everything that a particular object is uh, related to in the model, whether it's the package or diagrams. See down here, here's a signal. Ignition off. It's used on our activity diagram. Let's just double check. So we open up the activity diagram by clicking on it. Uh, if I scroll up, there's ignition off. So that's a signal. This action is waiting until it receives that signal. Then it's going to terminate the activity here. So that signal, ignition off, is used in that activity diagram. It's also used in this sequence diagram. So if I click on it, it also up, opens up the sequence diagram. Oh, it looks like I forgot to save my thing a while ago. You remember I, I showed the full path name because I moved things from one package to another package? And let's just turn everything off real quick. See how, how fast it is, but I just forgot to save it a while ago. I exited without saving changes. Now, remember, there's ignition on. That's the one we're looking for, right? Igni no, ignition off, ignition off. So there's ignition off right there. So that signal is used on that particular diagram, okay? And it's then used on this block definition diagram. Let's just open it up and see what this guy's doing. So this one is where the user defined the signal to start with, it looks like, on this, on this particular diagram, okay? So it's showing us where it's used. So that means if I've changed something, then I know exactly where to go look for the, for the reference for that object, or what, whether it's on a diagram or it's on a package or if it's linked to an element, whatever the case might be. Okay, so these, these particular queries I defined as the model designer to help me in keeping my model in sync by seeing every place where something is utilized. Okay, let's say, like that steering value, value type we looked at earlier, it's used on, defined on this activity diagram, and let's see, here it's associated with a, a pin on the activity diagram, so this is helping me, the designer of the model, keep track of every place where my data is utilized, okay? So that's using Cradle's traceability table to show me what I got.